and here we go. This is Flash Somebody at the Dork Table today, Saturday, hmm, the ninth day of uh, March, two zero one and nine and counting. So far, so good. A Grimner, Grimner the Beast. He takes on all the technical stuff here at the Real Liberty Media. Whips it into submission, even if he has to spend money to do it. But he wins in the end. And he puts uh, all the radio stuff we, all us crazy people do. Me and Mary, and Moose, Vincent, you know, all the crazy people. And uh, Grimner puts it all out there for the willing participation of the public. That's right. We don't hold hostages. Well, I do when I do the show with other people, but there was no hostages available today. So we're going to say hi to the bots and bodies in the real libertymedia.com chat. The other night I did it backwards just to do it different. Now, to be different, I'm going to do it forward. <laughs> Boy, that was bad. So anyway... It says I'm live on the reallibertymedia.com chat in the main feed. So I'm going to start saying hello to the bots and bodies out there. We've got Barman, Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Anti, Asmo, Beth Z, Chouse, Donny, I B, Don, C, J, Dread, Meister, Brow, Ray and Rob, Works, Trust, Number One, Vanna White, Weather, Dork. Phantom, and well then, Beetle Circle, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, A Mental, D Dork Cakes, and then me, Flash Somebody, uh, Frumpy, H W R Two, Java Doctor Two, Jays Nine, Jays Cozy, Kiss Nancy Dubois, Phone Saw, Sock Puppet, Tech Man, Uno, and Van Meter. One. It's a lot of words. You guys got long names. I'm thinking my uh, when I take over the Real Liberty Media, I think I'm gonna just give you guys like three letter names. Make the best of three letters, and you can't copy each other. You all have to be original. But today, being as I got a dork table all to myself, and Vincent and come along to argue with me about who owns POTUS Trump. Is it Goldman Sachs or is it Bear? We do not know, but we have our suspicions at the com. Anyway, so what have I got today? I'm thinking I found a really interesting link to me. It'd probably drive all you guys all buggy. You don't want to go outside and shovel snow after I start reading this. But, I'm going to do it. Don't try to stop me, Sneed. I'm going to read it. It's called, <laughs> My Child Got Chicken Pox and Survived. You read it right. My Child Got Chicken Pox, a vaccine preventable disease, question mark. And it says, yes, and she survived. In fact, it was everything the media said it wasn't. And there is even a link and a video in it and all this kind of stuff. But I felt like reading it because I feel, um, what do you call it? Uh, I guess I'm one of those anti-everything people. If the government wants you to do it, don't do it. It's not usually going to end well for anyone. Well, but... but there I did it. I post it. Well, look at this. I mean, I'm even posting stuff while I'm doing radio, just like a grown-up. Back to my story. I know you were led to believe it was a deadly disease and saw the story of a child who died 13 years ago from chicken pox who didn't have a spleen, couldn't be vaccinated with varicella, couldn't be around kids who were recently vaccinated with varicella or vaccinated ch children whose immunity to chicken pox had worn off or vaccinated adults 
Good God, is there enough choices here? Uh, or vaccinated adults who no longer had immunity, or really anyone who had any kind of sickness. Wow, that narrows it down. I'm not sure what is more tragic, the death of a child or the fact that the death of a child was used to emotionally manipulate us into vaccinating our children. Hmm. Boy, that sounds like what I've been thinking all along. Hmm. Well, maybe not all of it, but the last plenty of years. Anyway, as a parent, I never take kindly to emotional manipulation techniques, so I decided to do my research instead. Here's why we didn't vaccinate against chicken pox, and following is the natural protocol we use to manage our child's symptoms at home. Okay, that that's enough of that, but the point still is, whew, boy, are there a lot of lame in the public eye. By God, a country. These people will tell you anything so that they can make a dollar. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, I I don't see a lot of honesty in the financial commerce world, if you know what I mean. Most of the stuff they claim is a bunch of overrated exaggerations. This will do that, and this will do this. And then if you're crazy enough to buy the things they tell you to buy, to do the things they tell you they'll do, they don't work. It's called planned obsolescence. <clears throat> Ooh, let's go to the reallibertymedia.com chat and see what's going on. Might be fun. We've got, and well then, Rob Works, Jay Dredd, and Van Meter having a rip-roaring conversation on the main feed right for your visual approval, I'm telling you. Hmm. wonder what it is about the internet that seems to bring the very worst out of us, very select few people. And then their negative shit is infectious, you know. And we're clowning and having a good joke about it all, but it, in the long run, it's just a lot of wasted time, you know, doing nothing. I think Cowboy was mentioning that to me uh, earlier. I might be wrong. It might have been Rob Works or Grimm. It was one of these clowns because I don't really, well... I'm a bad fella. When people it just rub me raw, I just think you don't have to read the crap that way. And, well, I'm just never going to be a Toys R Us kid, you know. If uh, if you don't want to play, that's fine. Because I don't either. <laughs> and then some people, well, I play. And then, uh... Then I changed my mind. Gee, just like being alive. You know, one day you want this, and the next day you want that. And two days later, you don't want none of it. What do they call that? Indecision. Hmm. No? What do they call that? Yeah, well, whatever they call it, it's not, in my opinion, doesn't really show any instability. Changing your mind about stupid shit that nobody gives a fuck about any damn way. But... The guy that stands firm on his politics and his education and his religion. Boy, you got a can full of freaking worms there that you can play with at your whim anytime you want to. Oh, wait, have we got more people chattering? No, the chat seemed to shit. Take a shit. Okay, guys, don't entertain me with your chat on the dork table today. Thanks. And I don't even have Vinny here to interrupt me when I'm talking. So, hmm, maybe I'll go to see what is on the interwebs. Because that story was, uh, I don't know, it was kind of run-of-the-mill to me. I wasn't saying anything I didn't know. Oh, yeah, but we've got a lot of folks. Maybe that listen to the show, too, that aren't on the RLM, that believe the government. Who is to know? And then why would anybody in this time of life believe anything the government told them? You have to be kind of, um, what's the right word for it? 
not innocent, not, not, not even naive, but would it start with an N? Hmm, let's look for an N word for a person that believes what the government tells them. Hmm. I can't seem to find one. At least not one that's not going to insult somebody. So let's go with naive. What what does that mean, anyway? Too innocent to understand the truth? Easily fooled? I don't know. There's lots of ways to look at that word, naive. And sometimes I think some people, it, it works for them to, uh, to be innocent of like some of the shit that people want to be going on in this world is a it's a little disappointing you know you look around and you go hey i got a nice street to walk down and i go to the grocery and i get my food and whatnot and i got a nice walk back to the house and whatnot where's all the trouble at oh so I guess if you don't have any physical shit in your life, you can make some on the internet so that you don't get bored. We get bored on the internet so quickly because we're all so brilliant. We know all the answers. We know everything about everything and beyond. I've read people know shit about things like space travel and... What other things? Well, I think my favorite one is this movie. The movies are just insane. They put these ideas in your head that, like, every five blocks there's a murder, and every 20 minutes the cops are solving it and sending some murderer to prison for your safety. Hmm. Well, I guess, but that's not the world I remember. I must have been high that day. I think I'm going to get high now just to not get depressed thinking about how life degenerated over 40, 50 years. Because the change from the 70s to now is insane. Hold on one second. Thank you for your patience. Uh, 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 I couldn't reach something. I had to stretch across the desk all the way over yonder. and The headphones didn't fit when I did it, so I moved. Anyway, where was I? Not really going anywhere today. I'm just thinking about the way things look compared to the way things truly are and how, you know, how seriously different is that, so... What I mean is, uh, if you're a miserable fuck, and you're sitting in your miserable fuck room, and you're looking at your miserable fuck stuff, well, then guess what you are? <laughs> and <laughs> if you're not, and you're a happy fuck, and you're in your happy fuck house, looking at your happy fuck things, guess what you are? <laughs> you're a happy fuck. But don't, don't get your head all exploded over yourself there sport because i think we're just all a bunch of fucks i that's my opinion anyway i don't i don't think anyone's any better than any else you know you, uh, it depends on if you got one of those value judgments where you judge people by what they wear or what they what they own or how they polish their nipples or whatever your gauge is if you got a gauge you use it and some things in life, I don't know, I measure them differently than a lot of the, a lot of the people I've read comment over um, years of online chat. <coughs> Whoops, has left me coughing without hitting the button. But I'm getting better at that. So, anyway, where was I wandering about? I... I don't know. I guess I was back on that thing about how deep down inside, I really think people are just people. And when I'm just ignoring them, you know, walking through my day from one point to the other, I'm not competing and comparing and better than and judging. I'm on my way to somewhere. So 
what seems to get into the way to make me do all that other horse shit is the talking part. <laughs> ah, Grim, I just caught up to, he caught on to, he, yeah, Happy Fuck House is, uh, it's a very good place to be. Um, why wouldn't you want to be there? You know, who in their right mind, and especially now with all these stressful things in life, age creeping up on you, your job's a pain in the ass, you're either too married, you're too single, you're too thin, you're too fat, you're too bald, you're not bald enough, your pants don't fit, your shoes hurt, it's, you know, just every freaking thing that can be wrong seems to catch people. It may not catch everybody all at once at the same thing, but there's so many things to bitch about. We all get something. <laughs> so, you, so you have all these people just wah, wah, about everything. Because there's really nothing good collectively. You know, we, we might have some good shit privately, but then when you talk about that, then... Hey, they're bragging again about their fucking country, Johnny, those communists. And I think what what we don't know how to interpret amongst these, uh, each other is uh, people can be happy in a shit world like the one we got. How do they do that? Hmm. Could it have something to do with cannabis? Or could it have something to do with maybe not being so fucking competitive and just existing and seeing where it goes? That's pretty much what I've been trying to do. Instead of controlling it, ride it and then see where it goes. It might be stationary. It might not go anywhere. I think that's what I ended up with is the roller coasters came to a stop and went, eh, okay, I get out. And I did. It takes Rob Works three months to smoke an ounce. Mm. That's even a little more than me. When I think I was doing about a quarter a week, you know, give or take. And that's sharing with people. So it's not even a lot. Sounds like a lot if you don't know anything about weights and measures. Oh, he had an ounce of weed. Yeah, well, it wasn't an ounce of fucking gold, but they <laughs> cost the same depending on what you burn. You can find pricey um, ounces. I guess you you could find um, stuff that's even more expensive than gold if you look hard enough because people experiment and they do special things to their products. And what If you nail George Carlin, you nail two things together that have never been nailed together before, and some schmuck's going to buy it from you. And this legalizing weed shit, if that doesn't just go to show how completely ignorant the public is and how completely hypocritical the system is, all in one, there you go. You don't have to bring up any of the shitty other crap they did. Just use weed. <laughs> just cannabis. Not even bother with hemp. And these pricks have enough lawyers to tie you up in court until you're dead. <sighs> and here we are. What was it? Levi's going back to making hemp because it's better than cotton. Wait a minute. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, then how did they con everybody into trading over from hemp to cotton in the first place? I sure like to. We need one. One of those um, Vinny things, because he does his research real good, like Jerry at BitChute. These guys go to find out who the fuck made the decision in the first place to do it, and then they never let it go. They're like a dog, you know, shaking it until it dies. And then after it dies, they beat it against the wall for another hour. Relentless. But anyway, my opinion about it is the people that own that, have always owned that. It's never been a public thing, bunch of Jew pricks. And here we are. We're we're being improved on again, you know, by the same people that fucked us over in the first place. Uh, what a 
what a world we live in. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Anything? Oh, there you go. Rob Work says there are many things more expensive than gold by weight. Yeah, well, I was using weed as an example, and, you know, I would never pay that kind of money personally. I mean, I'm just saying, I know there's people that do. And I'm not one of them. I don't go with brand names and fancy uh, labels to get me to buy shit. It's, if, it's, if you do enough research, you find out where the shit was made. Sometimes the top of the line shit was made in the same plant at the same time with the secondary shit. <laughs> it's, it's all the same shit in the long run. So you can't win. You might cut a corner here, come out ahead there, but some the, the system's just like a roller coaster, up, down, all around, turn this corner, ah, next thing you know, it stops, get the fuck out. Hey, wait a minute, I was just stopped throwing up and started to enjoy it, now you want me to get out. <laughs> but you know how Walt Disney is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Disneyland, the Allweg monorail system will be traveling at a ground speed of about 30 miles an hour. Please keep your legs and arms in the car at all times while the car is in motion. Uncle Wally hates the lawsuits. Thank you. And that's what I grew up with. Monsanto at Disneyland. Hmm. Monsanto has their mitts in so much more than agriculture. <laughs> so, I mean... Just the seed damage they've done through the courts over, what, the last 50, 60 years. And who knows what else they've done. Because they're big. They were in the people mover at Disneyland when I was a teenager, 12, 13 years old. And all these things of the future, they had a freaking camera, 360. And no matter where you turned around, there's what you're supposed to see in a perfect circle. And and this goes back to when I was in my early teens and before that, 11, 12, 13, I think, uh, when I was going to Disneyland as a recreational habit. But the thing that sticks is all, all the in all the input Monsanto had to do with the mechanics of Disney World or Disneyland, and then eventually Disney World. But I never went there. I avoided Disney World like it had a virus. Lived in Florida, went to Orlando, went, never bothered once to even attempt to go to Disney World. I don't know why. But I guess I was just, uh, whatever I was supposed to learn by going there in the first place, I learned it. And it, it was a interesting place. They had a lot of things to um, visually see that you couldn't explain. So it was fascinating. And then when I became a teenager it wasn't fascinating anymore but it was a good place to go to meet girls <laughs> and uh, i had a buddy joe and me and joe did that shit we were about 14 15 years old and here we are all these years later and and we find out all the the truth about disney's art and all the crap that disney was involved in we never heard about any of that when we were like, doing it Christ, I was in, on the internet in my 40s and uh, reading things about Walt Disney liked to diddle with the piddle in the middle, baby, and put out his cigarettes in their butthole. And you just go, wow, well, that explains the talking mouse, doesn't it? <laughs> Man, you got to think about what kind of mind in the first place. Forget the creative drawing part, but the mind that thinks of a talking mouse. And he's going to put it to paper and then add voice to it, make a movie. There's, I'm uh, kind of suspicious about all that. I don't think it was just one person ever. Alone, we're pretty s simple minded. It, you know, one person by themselves is, they're not very impressive. But when you get five or six of these nerds together, and you give them free reign to experiment with shit. They come up with the wildest gizmos and gizmachis. And now, strangely enough, we got this government behind every fucking other thing going on. And the government 
has figured out how to manipulate the population using the government to manipulate the population. They apologize for it. They experiment on us. They use medical experiments. They experiment with a water. They experiment with food, electricity, and they apologize for shit when they get caught. And, you know, somebody with enough money has enough time and money to take it to the, you know, the SCOTUS. And then it gets a little newspaper time, and then they get the president to apologize. And they wait about 12, 14 days, and then they start it over somewhere else. America is huge. You cannot manage anything that big. It just cannot be done. And the proof is, look at the condition everything's in when it gets that big. Oh, we're the greatest in the world. Look at us. Oh, well. Like, I was I was temporarily a UAW worker. And by the time I started working for the Ford company, the cars they were making were complete shit. And it was just terrible. I remembered this, you know, 65, 66 uh, Mustang. And then when I worked at Ford, on a, it was a different model car altogether. But when I worked at the plant and saw how the operation was done and the kind of materials they used for this and that, I was not impressed. And, and the money then, I think a brand new um, LTD or a T-Bird was somewhere around $4,500. So it's like late 70s, 77 to 8, right in there. And now... <laughs> you try to buy a new car now, and these idiots have devaluated and taxed and regulated and paid off and bought everything to the point where if you want a car, it costs you, uh, what, 40000 for something decent? That, even back in the 70s, it wasn't a great machine, but it was worth the money more than you can say about something now i mean a cadillac for 50 60 grand is just it's insane me and my brother used to well when we were teenagers we we would buy a car for a hundred dollars not it it was a different world that's that's why some people get on me about well i drove without a license and da 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 but then I forget to put in the part about when I was do when I was breaking their precious little law. The worst extreme of it was they write you a ticket and go, "Okay, see you in court," and then there you go. Well, that ticket's only good in that jurisdiction. It's not good any damn where else. And they're not going to spend a fortune to take you across state lines for. A a no driving ticket, a no license driving ticket. It's just insane. So, but now I wouldn't put the pa put it past the police to, <laughs> to really, you know, go full tilt. This get this guy. He's driven without a license, and by God, we need to stop him and pursue justice. Because <laughs> um, that's what law think. You know, people think that's law. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get that. All right, Here, here's the logic of your license. It's not legal to drive without one. So if you get one, then it's legal to drive. But we're going to stop you, and when we stop you, we're going to fine you for the shit you did wrong. Hmm. Let's see. So what's the difference between that and not having the fucking license in the per first place would be, and we're going to write you up for not having a driver's license. Okay, well, once upon a time, these things were little slaps on the wrist. People couldn't really be bothered with. But turning such a lucrative fucking big money business over the years. Hmm. Hold on, let me light up. That <laughs> this is my wife. Anyway, but they make so much money off it now that stopping that source of revenue, jeez, what would you do to a city if they couldn't collect revenue from traffic, you know, criminals? 
parking criminals and uh, what else do they have pot well we all know the pothead story but let, let's go a little deeper into this and think about it because you know people want to talk about their fucking rights and their fucking lefts and their middles and their outsides and their insides but very rarely do they want to talk about how did we get so deep in this horrible shit that <laughs> The cops are the bad guys now. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to go to the reallibertymedia.com chat and check out what's going on. I see Miss Kate, and Donna, and Rob works. Whoa. And, well, then, old Frumpy is up there as HWR2. And, yeah, people are chitter-chattering while I'm doing the Dork Table podcast just to have enough fit about the shit that we're all collectively in, you know. And that's my right, I suppose. And I don't even know what a right is. I'm just using that word to express that no matter what, I don't even live where you live. So all this freedom of speech crap, and I've never been in my whole life uh, stopped in a what do you call that, uh, arrested for a point of view or an opinion. Anything I said never got me any kind of real anything. But I think we live in a different world now, and I say that because of uh, the extremes people go to to be whatever they think they are on the Internet. That hurts us. You know, I think more people would be more interested to check out the Internet if people weren't so um, self-centered and dig me, I'm cool, and I know everything, and I'm an expert, expert, I mean, can't we just be good at what we're good at, settle for that, and, and learn the shit we don't know? That would be kind of nice. And I'm not accusing everybody. <coughs> just a few people. Because oh, I want to take a moment to say to old Java Doctor, I don't know if he's out there or not. Sometimes he's logged on but doing other things. And he's in the middle of his second week, third week, second to third week of recovering on the big knee. And they're telling him they're going to do the other one six weeks after the first one. Yeah, I got an in. No, maybe it wasn't me. Anyway. So they're going to do another surgery on him, and he's learning the, the ropes through the first one, so the second one won't be such a shock to him, and he'll be more in tune with how to manage it. Now, I don't blame the guy for getting on here in, in the mornings. There's nobody much on me, and maybe sometimes be the late night stuff, because I live in Denmark, so it's uh, your wee early hours of the morning, and uh you know, you wake up in agony from a surgery, and you get on the internet, somebody to chit-chat with a little bit. And even I have tried to be a little positive about the surgery, because I, too, had a surgery. So I remember how I reacted to all that stuff. And I did the same thing. I needed two of them. I had one done, and then six weeks later, boom, turned right around and did the other one. And... Everybody that knew me was really shocked, but I told them I wanted to get it over and try to heal as fast as I could instead of putting this crap off and agonizing over it. So it's just not, you know, I'm not just talking out of opinion to Java on the uh, reallibertymedia.com chat because some people read it and don't, they don't get involved. They just let it go. And, you know, it's kind of a, it's a shitty spot to be in when you're in it. And But this first one will teach what he needs to know to go on to the next one and get healed. And then there's, he was even mentioning uh, looking for Miss Mary for some remedy uh, input. So if I see Mary and, and you haven't talked to her, all, see, that's what I mean. We network here. This person knows that person and they're off two different schedules. So you mention to the other one and they can message to the other person and go, oh, here, try this. And uh, <laughs> are we all experts, says the grim man? I don't know. Hmm. I think people have talents, all of us. And some are just in hidden ways. So when you try to socialize, your gift that you think you have is really not the gift that you have. 
you want that gift and you try it a lot, but it, it doesn't work the way you think it's working because we got that uh, impression. People interpret things at their own level and their own speed, their own drunkenness, their own highness, whatever you want to call it. Whatever the mood you're in could dictate anything. You could say a nice thing to me on the internet, but say I'm in a bad mood or me and the circ are having a disagreement. Hmm. I wonder if that wouldn't cause me to either ignore your comment or say something snarky or whatever. Because what's going on in your personal business, I mean, really, do do we all honestly tell each other the exact truth about every waking moment of your day? I don't think so. So when some people are too extreme on a negative I get to the point where I think that their immaturity doesn't allow them to see that there's better ways to flirt with a female than what you're doing. Try something better, because what you're doing is failing. <laughs> and that's my interpretation of what I was reading this morning. I could be wrong, but it's just, you know, how would my words upset somebody else so deeply that they got to tell me, fuck you at the end. Because there's one person that does that to me, but he's pretty nasty. But the other guy that does it to the other person, he doesn't bother me so much. I just dig him and leave him alone. He's not even worth reading. It's just insane. And after, you know, we get drunk and we say stupid shit to each other on the internet and, and then you you don't know you said it i've come on it's it's on the internet you can look for it you can find it leave your computer on and go read it the next day and see what you said it's so uh, enlightening you know uh, maybe it's amusing to see people mistreat each other online that could be a mental disorder we all share I mean, some people, I don't know, it's it's funny to see them argue. I don't, I don't feel good about this, actually. I'm kind of, I'm laughing because it's making me feel bad. Um, but yeah, I get, a, I get a certain kick out of certain people disagree, like Rob Works and Vinny. Oh, fucking hell. That's got to be my favorite. And I'm right in the middle of it because I like Rob Works and I like Vinny. But Vinny and Rob works don't mix. They mix like oil and vinegar. So, but I try to not jump sides. and <laughs> But sometimes I do because I pick on Vince all the time. But then again, now me and Vince have come to terms and had had it out and blah, blah, blah. And, eh, fuck you. And then we get back together again and talk some more. So... I don't know what to make of the world anymore. It's just, if you know, if you want a tough argumentative life, there is one. And if you don't, then there isn't one. <laughs> it's so screwed up. And, and I'm going to blame it on the inferior input from the electric and the water and the food. And I'm not so much like 99% getting shit stuff out here. Maybe, say 50, just to be safe. Because I'm not immune to life. I'm aware of life. There's uh, there's things in life that I, I don't know if I consciously pay attention to look out for them, but they don't surprise me. And not only the, do they not surprise me, but they never happen. I don't, um, I, well, let's see, I don't get into violent acts with people in public. <laughs> I don't get in verbal yelling matches with people in public. Um, what else don't I do that people seem to consider is common now? And it's absolutely the farthest thing from it. Uh, in my public, the public that I engage, uh, people are pleasant to each other. They talk. They see run into old friends and whatnot. It's a smaller place. They know a lot, a lot of people know each other. I had a chance to talk to the bar owner, uh, the bar where I go to, and uh, him and his wife were busy away for a while and, and didn't notice I was even gone. Anyway, so I run into him, uh, went yesterday for a beer or two, maybe three, 
because I didn't take any amount of money to drink. I just was doing a little shopping, figured I'd kill a little time in the afternoon. Anyway, come to a point, and I said, well, can I buy you a drink? And he goes, no, thanks, I'm driving today. But he could have said, yeah, I'll take a Coke. But he didn't. He said, no, thanks. Okay. Then a little later, he says, comes over to the bar, and he's going to pour me a shot whether I want it or not. He was insistent. And followed up a little later with a beer. And this is the guy that I all I did was offer him, and he refused. Then later that happened. So, wow, what a... You know, if you're going to get treated like that in a place that you frequent, I think it's good. <laughs> and it's it's nice to be just, you know, a regular face and nobody expects, oh, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. They just take things as it comes. <laughs> they, they say, no, thank you, instead of, you know, oh, yeah, that's money for my bar. <laughs> I'm gonna, of course I'm going to do that. I'm going to tell you I'm getting a Remy Martin, but, well, we, we got tea in this bottle. <laughs> anyway, I spent a lot of years in American bars where people did um, shitty things behind the bar to make more profit for the bar. <laughs> and here I am in, in the present modern day, and people aren't trying to gouge each other in the local bar and it's very strange i've never uh, i've never seen this side of life in my whole life till i got where i'm at so coincidentally it could be the time of life for this yeah you know, the size of the place i'm in but it's all new to me because i was a big city boy for quite a number of years did a lot of the big cities uh enjoyed the hell out of them too boy it's a shame that they've all gone to shit but I guess when I was getting, you know, growing out of them, that's about the period, right about 90. And that's about the period where the city started to show outward decay. And you could see it was a failed experiment. They should have buried, but they're going to keep going any damn way. And, wow, now they got, what, a 100-mile border on America from the coast in 100 miles. <laughs> and they... This is you're gonna love this guys if you don't know it already. What do they call it, Rob Works? They call it the no I'm gonna say blank so that Rob can show me he knows it and I'll wait give him a minute or so to catch up. But it's the no something zone, a hundred mile border around the inside of the United States, coast to coast, all around it. And uh wow, what a mess. It used to be a nice place when I was growing up in it. And then the the state got greedy, I think. Maybe the debt got so high and so out of hand that the the government needed to make up all these excuses over, that they've made over the last 40 years, you know, to cover the interest. While when average Joe doesn't understand the money has no value, then he doesn't understand the money has no value. You can't explain it to him. And because he'll always argue, yeah, but there's gold and there's silver and there's this and there's that. There's also people that don't comply. Now, it may be true that Hill Dog was a, a big mastermind and uh, player in the uh, Libya situation where they took Gaddafi out. But it wasn't her that took Gaddafi out. It was his her that took the credit for it in front of the freaking uh, political theater to the world got up there and we came we saw we killed him and that was a good thing to the public hmm. i ever wonder why it's a good thing for somebody to go over to another place you've never been to never saw never heard of and destroy it and just say well we didn't do anything wrong prove we did something wrong you can't prove a negative and that's the approach they took on this and, yeah, maybe Gaddafi wasn't a swell dude and all that. And I didn't want to go out and hang out with him. But he was running a fucking country on a planet full of savages that will do what they did to you when you don't do what you're told, no matter how big you get. So, hmm, what does that tell me? And that tells me that behind every, every, everything, 
there's a small table of people that decide what happens and what doesn't happen. Now, that may not make sense to a lot of people because the world is so big. And blah, 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 blah. Mm. Yeah, well, that might be so, but the things that people think they're, dis they're disagreeing on or agreeing on, nine out of ten times have fuck all to do with anything to do with living where they live. It's all about way over yonder somewhere and wars and taxes and bombs and all these ideas that, well, sure, you can explain them to me and you can show me on paper how they work, but you can't physically do them. After a certain amount of people, this is the dark table. This is my favorite bitch about fucking human beings is after you get too many idiots around you, somebody goes off on a tangent. And it looks like the number is somewhere around 35 right now. But there's always one monkey in the group that insists on throwing shit at other people in the group. And it's just life. It's just like it's a matter of numbers. It's a, an equation. You can't argue it. You can't change it. You can't fix it. But you can't keep the numbers down <laughs> so you know who the monkeys are. But if you've got 300 million monkeys, you tell me that you know what your monkeys are doing. And how do you know what they're doing? And then on top of it, why is it important to know what they're doing? <laughs> See, we've been conditioned over years and years and years and years to believe these complete, total insane ideas about how we see our peers because if you're a person and you live in the boundaries of this little country well there you are and if you live over here well you're different than them over there because we told you you are <laughs> and then there's some people that that take the time to travel around and they go here and they go there and they meet people and they find out, you know what? The only thing that's different about us is the freaking idiots that tell us that we're different. But the the people, they all seem the same, whether you speak the same language or not. And how I mean that is, I've walked through this freaking area for what, four, four years, all, all coming up on four and a half. And Never once have I been uh, mistreated in a way in public that was going to change my life. Nothing. I think they had one guy down the road. He didn't like me too much. And he was kind of verbal about it. But I've mentioned he he stopped. Well, when he's really drunk, rides his bike by me, and we cross paths alone, he's not so nice. But he's drinking. So I, I don't get excited about it. But when he's with everybody else, he's cordial. And... That's what matters, not what people say they're going to do, or not that the side of you just makes them upset. Well, that's that's life, right? But the man keeps his hands off me. I keep my hands off him, and we tolerate each other. And that's my biggest problem in my society, is I pass by a neighbor that doesn't like Americans. <laughs> but... You know, what are you going to do? Now, fortunately, he doesn't drink in the bar I go to. He likes to drink cheap on the uh, on the street. And that in itself proves that he's, well, he's local. So he's going to always win the argument. So I'm not going to engage him. <laughs> uh, I, let, me, let me make a point to my friend out there. I only engage people that I can beat. If I can't beat you, I ain't going to play. Now, here's the other side of that. If you bore me after a while, I feed you to the sharks and I abandon you. <laughs> You're going to learn about that one. That one's always fun. We'll do an experiment with it and see where it goes. We're being all philosophical today at the dork table talking all kinds of crazy shit, people. You know, because... We're a bunch of emotional savages. <laughs> we all want to. We all want to be right. We all want to own the big house and have the big car, big dick. There you go. Right, right, right. <laughs> P. 
people are very rarely ever just satisfied with what they have. There's a few guys and gals on the Real Liberty Media I exclude from who I am speaking. And I don't need to name them. They know who they are. Because they've been saying the same thing the same way ever since I met them. They have not shifted one iota. They are solid people. And there's other people that are kind of wish-washy and make really bizarre statements that don't make any sense to a crowd of this uh, mental ability, I would say. A lot of smart people here. Well, then again, I think there's a lot of smart people on the internet, period, because playing some of these freaking games and operating the computer and all that takes a little bit of brain. I have trouble with the operating it and the caring about the the inner workings and what goes on behind all the coding. And I, I'm not into all that. But what I do enjoy, I enjoy. <laughs> And with, you know, Grimm's help and Vinny and Mary and Kate and Rob and Cowboy Tech and Al Anthony and on and on and on. Well, there's about 20 of you fuckers. Um, they've helped me get where I'm at now in their own little way. you know. And I think uh, we don't need to know. You know, like I could not ever said anything to these people. They they don't live to be thanked for their hard work. But I think that they take enough shit from some people that they need to be <laughs> reminded that what they do is actually any help at all because it's a cold fucking world right now. You know, people just um, ah, they're aimed at all the wrong shit because we were raised like a bunch of savages and. If you don't recognize that, that doesn't mean you're not a savage. <laughs> it just means you don't recognize that you are one. Uh, we do horrible, terrible shit to each other daily, right? In word and deed, whether we know we're connected to it or not, somebody else took it upon their self to connect us to it, like me. <laughs> I happen to... To have one parent that was not born in the United States of Ms. America, and I have another one that was. Now, for some reason, the one that was trumped the one that wasn't because of where I was conceived and uh, produced and eventually brought into the world. <laughs> so, if I'd had been physically born somewhere else, well, that country would own my paperwork, see? That's definitely got to be the reason I can see this from that angle having you know two different countries on two different people my mom never naturalized so she didn't want no part of America she just wanted to be married to my dad <laughs> it was uh, it was the same as me and Cirque I suppose we didn't give a shit about the damn countries we just wanted whatever looked best at the moment. And I think at the time when my folks decided to, to do what they did, America seemed like the better choice at the time. Little did they know. <laughs> it didn't matter. And they found out eventually, but they didn't know. And uh, I think my mom just wanted to go home and, and not be in America. My dad went along with it. And now they're both gone. So, mm. I guess everybody got what they were after in the long run. Maybe not. I, I'm assuming, you know, you, whatever is in other people's heads and whatever they tell you and write and all this other stuff, that's just a scratch. You're not even close to what it's, what's inside somebody else. You cannot make heads or tails. And I always say you, but I'm I'm just talking for me. But you can't make heads or tails of another person's being for however long they've been alive and base all that shit off of them. crap like the internet. <laughs> it's not going to work. You need physical contact. And that changes the entire game. And people like Kate and Don and Rob and Grimner and Moose that actually have met you know some of the other players in person. They know that. <laughs> they know it better. And watching it, I'm saying it because I've met people I met online in real life. <laughs> and it was never disappointing. People online, uh, 
that's just my cup of tea for some reason. I just seem to um, be drawn to it at the time of life I was and found a lot of shit out on the internet. Even found a relationship I was interested in having. So, uh, I think what I'm getting at is whatever I make up my mind to do, I'll do it. If that's indeed what I have done. Because there's times you th think you make up your mind to do something. But if you don't physically take a step toward it, you're just thinking about it. Eh, there's a difference. There's thinking about doing it. And there's doing it. And I cannot take the internet as seriously as doing something. I mean, it's uh, chatting, and oh, we type a bunch of crap back and forth, and we show each other links and all that, but that's not doing anything. That's just some form of interaction or entertainment or disappointment or something. <laughs> but it sure as fuck ain't happening in any form of reality that does anything, except in your head. Mm. Let me light up. Speaking of light up, there you go. That was what I was hinting at, sweetie. You didn't have to yell it across the room. <laughs> My wife, she's so good to me. Anyway, yeah, I got um, my friends. I've had a couple of friends over a lifetime that have said, wow, you just got a charmed life. How do you do it? Because good shit happens. And I thought it was when I made up my mind to stop attracting all the crap that I was getting. And then it, and then it stopped. <laughs> now, now there's no more crap. Hasn't been any for about 20 years. Just a boring, dull life, you know, traveling around and meeting people, I suppose. Well, except for that 10 years in, uh, in uh, North Carolina. But that, too, was on and off and in and out. I did some traveling and went here and went there and ended up... Uh, as a result of that, ended up in Scotland. <laughs> that was looking back on all these things I've I've done in my life, and uh, then I read things like Moose is just uh, it's got my attention because it's so extreme. And she was writing this morning that it's just driving her buggy. She's uh, her and I think it was and well then too. They were both saying they're cabin crazy from being the snows got them locked in. They can't get out. Yeah, then you get out and there's no sun and that's deprivation and the cold is bitter and blah, 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 blah. It drives you nuts. So I, what do you say to somebody that's suffering like, like that when you don't have any experience at suffering like that? That's never affected me. So I'm not so much making light or making a joke about it. I think I'm taking a moment here to let Moose know if she ever hears the show that I don't find it amusing at all. I just don't know what to fucking say. So if any of my comments about you being housebound through the snowstorm, I could never be, th I'd never even imagine being in, in the first place. So I'm separate from all that somehow. Now, you know, in my mind, but I have my opinions, and then you read everything so straight and easy, and, and sometimes I'm sarcastic and don't really notice it, so. Mm. Anyway, you're going to get through this, you've got through everything else in the past, it's just another bump. Don't let it rock you too deep, because, you know, 90% of shit is in your head anyway, maybe 50. I would say 90 to somebody that says, uh, that thinks like you do. Yeah, you're a big thinker. So let's um, let's give Moose a little credit because she had such a bad morning here today. I felt bad for her. And uh, I don't want her to suffer any more than she already is from being locked down. That's just, prison is prison. But if you can enjoy your prison as I do, and Cirque does, Grimner and Rob works, uh, Cowboy Tech, I could go on. Miss Kate, there's a lot of people, and usually Moose does, but this, this extreme, uh, it's even got me emotional thinking about it, because, you know, it's just a picture in my head, and I saw the snow, and it was like, good lord, Cirk gets a half inch of snow, and she's all happy, because it snowed a little bit, we don't get hit like that, anyway, so, 
And enough about Little Moose's uh, lockdown and, and and Well Then and I think a couple of the others who Frumpy and Beetle, I can name a few. I'm trying to because I, I do pay attention to the people that tell me stuff. I just have a real uh, repeating names back problem. I always fuck those up somehow. <laughs> I'm not good with the detaily crap, but I got the ideas pretty well in tune, I think. Uh, there you go and and well comes back with and my point is made 100 mile radius constitution free zone that's what I was talking about earlier before I went on my rant about whatever I was ranting about and yeah it exists and the border patrols got you by the nuts and you think you got rights but you don't have any fucking rights because the Patriot Act well it's kind of suspended all that then they followed up with the NDAA, and now I think Trump's got a new one, the ADAA. Maybe one of you uh, nerds out there in real limited media can fix me on this error. I probably butchered the shit out of that one. Uh, the Welcome to the executive extension of the rights you thought you had. Hold on one second. Thank you for your patience in my <laughs> toke. Anyway, yeah, they're they're getting a little um, brainiac in the reallibertymedia.com chat right now, talking about a list of foreign trade zones by state. I mean, <laughs> what I mean, these people are smart people. I think that. Uh, most of the internet chat rooms are basically that, you know. And then you have the control freaks that want to put everybody else in jail for not listening to the rules. Okay. Now, let's just find that just a tad, right? Because in my opinion, I'm just talking for me about all this shit, but the way I look at it, right, there's social... Um, what do you call them? Um, social conventions. We all agree on them. And we're raised with them. We've had them beaten into us all our freaking life. We all know what they are. We all know what they mean. We, un we all know how to interpret them. Yet, the magic of the internet dries out the, um, the loose tongue. Me. I do it. Rob does it. Um, uh, Grimner, not so much. Grimner's got a real good grip on keeping his his uh, temper. When he's disgusted with us, he just plays some music and, and avoids what the nonsense is we're, uh, we're jibber-jabbering about, right? But the problem is, is some people are so deeply in, invested in their indoctrination that they really believe it's real. And they really believe the state is what the state says. And all this crap that's going on matters. Okay. Well, if it matters to you, that's, that's you it matters to. <laughs> not, not necessarily anybody else. Right? And I'm going to use Grimm for another example. Grimm has got it through his head. One way or another way, baking soda is an answer to a huge problem because certain things cannot survive in an alkaline environment so he feeds himself a certain product baking soda and he does a teaspoon of it every day and that provides his body an alkaline environment where a certain illness cannot survive <sighs> now we didn't make all this stuff up the stuff that was made up was the actual disease. But you can't explain that to anybody. I can't explain it to anybody. But I interpret the information I've gotten as, we did this experimenting on you. This is a byproduct of a social experiment. Nothing more, nothing less. And what sold me on that was the answer to this experiment. Radiation. <laughs> radiation and wigs for little kids because their hair falls out when they fix them 
not only that, but there's like a five-year mortality as a success after being treated by the, you know, the powers that be, the Rockefeller Medicine. They uh, they don't save anyone. They actually whatever they do, they don't fix nothing. They don't want anything fixed. They want us sick. And if you're not sick, I'd sure like to know who you are. I think I can count like five of you that ain't complained all fairly regularly about some form of illness or you're on some doctor's care for this or that or the other. Now, what I learned, not what you're learning, but what I learned from me is I am what I ingest. You know, what I'm fueled on creates the physical me that you see. Whatever I say comes out of me. Hmm. Well, when I started to pay attention to more details about what is good for me, I came up with, like what Grim found out about uh, baking soda. And there's other things. They're just as plentiful. I know that, Grim. You only believe it because it's true. I understand that. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying, I didn't even name the the illness and boom, you knew what I was talking about immediately. And so do a lot of other people. Uh, what is right? Rob's got fractal factoids. <laughs> making, I don't know, people are making little comments and they're interacting and that's pretty much all you can expect out of them. To sit here and call people names because the way they look at a government's decision or whatever game the fucking Fed's playing. The guy I respect is the one that says, fuck the Fed. Takes balls to say that out loud. I know. Because, you know, they're, they're huge. And they're going to get you. And they're going to take your guns away. And they're going to make you a slave. And you're going to work at Walmart until you're 90. You know, and eat out of garbage cans. Because Walmart doesn't pay very good. And on and on and on and on. Anything's real, anti. I, ah, he says, your karma ran over my dogma. <laughs> oh, Lord. See, what wasn't real? I don't know. It's, it's either all real or it's not all real. I don't see it being both. Very black and white in that respect. You know, I'm, I'm either married to Cirque or I'm not married to Cirque. I'm not kind of married no, that doesn't work. So, take that logic into everything else that you do. I was telling Cirque today, so they're probably one of the craziest things I've ever told her, and I'm going to repeat it on the dork table so that you guys can all have a good laugh because I'm sure it's going to sound really funny and crazy. But I'm going to explain it all first, and <laughs> it'll make sense, hopefully. <laughs> I, I was reading links, you know, the ones that have print, not just the video stuff, but reading things. And one of the stories I came across was a scientific -y kind of uh, explanation about the workings of a single cell. And according to this doctor, writer, whoever grainy, brainiac he was, whatever he had to say was fun. And that was the single cell has a sense of intelligence. Okay. Well, then I started to think about that. That means that, wow, all these cells separately have a sense of an intelligence. Then they bond together with their own kind and they create this and they create a vein and they create a this and a create a that. And there's all this crap going on inside me all the fucking time. I don't know what, what's going on. I would need other people to explain to me the inner workings of my physical system. <laughs> so, I had a, I had this brainiac thought, maybe a, six months ago when I read this, maybe a little bit longer, and that was, let's say that my cells do have a sense of intelligence. I wonder if that means they can be communicated to, not with, not, not about, but to where. My thought thinking, 
whatever thinking is. I could send my body ideas that maybe they'll work with. <laughs> and me and Cirque were talking about that today, and I was telling her, yeah, I, I have a talk with my cells about once every two, three weeks, and I say, hey, cells, are you all doing your shit right? Get with it. And here I am, physically capable at my age to do the shit I do. So, one more time, if it's a placebo, if it if it's in your head and it works, do it. That's the best proof for any person that there should ever be. Oh, the pill works. Who gives a fuck? If you think it works and you're physically better, the pill's working. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, but now on the other hand, here's where I drew the line further and I went, well, I don't feel good taking this. Hmm. What am I going to do? And then I read further and it said, well, the tests that they're taking on your kidneys are, um, <laughs> they're a side effect of taking the drug to take you to this place. You're taking a drug that damages you here, possibly. Oh, man. So then I'm caught in this t kind of a catch-22, but I, I did from the beginning of the time I started to take the pills. When I would ingest them, I just had this just god awful, uncomfortable feeling that uh, it was half in my head, but it, I knew it was because of the pill. So when I read this stuff, my mind immediately went to dump the fucking pill. I'd rather deal with this freaking disease and not risk my, I think it was kidney, my well, kidneys or whatever. And I'm not real medically knowledgeable and all that. I'm not one of those I know everything about everything guys I know a little bit about a lot of things and sometimes I trust my insides I don't judge my life on your words your words no thank you uh, words get you in nothing but trouble but what you see and what you feel when those two things line up for me I do it and like sir they lined up I did it there you go but when I'm not comfortable with something, no, I have that nerve. I'm that idiot that says, fuck you, I ain't doing that. But I stand alone to this day, you know. Um, I'm not setting a trend. People ain't falling in my footsteps, leaving America behind them and going on and starting a new life abroad and all this kind of crazy uh, stuff that I tell you might sound like a bunch of crap <laughs> it's true anyway there's even witnesses on the in you know in the online world to my physical reality that know so uh it just makes telling stories it's that much more fun because part of me knows that uh, there's a people that are going to hear any of this are going to think wow what a crazy he's a good writer <laughs> but no actually the reality and the truth is far more interesting than anything I could make up out of my, not, you know, my creative side. Wouldn't even compare to the truth. And, and I don't know. That's my version. You know, hold on one second. Okay, but th that's how I see things. And then you look on to something, and of course you see a completely different thing. And that's where we all kind of collide into each other because the difference is, you know, we all look at the same thing and, you know, like we've found out over a period of time, we all see it a different way in some respects. There might be similarities, but then one thing that makes me laugh just pisses the moose off just horribly. She just goes crazy. And then the things that irritate me to where I'll tell somebody to go fuck off make everybody else laugh. So, you know, is I just sit and ponder about the duality thing. After a while, it just seems ridiculous. It, you're just choosing sides and somebody else's crap, you know. Well, to me, because all this outside shit on the internet doesn't even doesn't even scrape me. I have a good daily existence. I'm fairly happy. I mean, for for an old man, I'm a little grumpy. Cirque says in the morning, I don't wake up dancing like Fred Astaire, bringing flowers. 
you know, doing all that shit. But uh, I enjoy doing weird things like going to the grocery store that's, you know, 20 minute walk away and other people don't they what pleases one person makes the other one just like hey get that shit the fuck away from me that's what i call balance not one person being balanced always it's a very difficult thing to do by yourself it it helps to have help there you go not necessarily a partner but look at how uh grimner likes to do his radio program with Moose. With Moose, he goes crazy when he doesn't know where she's at. Because <laughs> she mutes and forgets this button and that button. She's worse than I am on a computer. But when you split them apart, he falls apart. Where's my Moose? Help, help, help. <laughs> I'm teasing you there, Grimner. But yeah, you know, I, I feel that. Hey, you two, you get along in a way that I don't get along. So I listen to it and it just cracks me the hell up how you two associate with each, with each other and then the links and the different kind of music and it's fun now i find some people uh, i find some people's input insane uh you had a friend of yours on there one night to uh, solve the chemtrail pl- problem his response was to blow the chemtrail planes out of the air using the air force <laughs> And uh, for some reason, like 99% of the people that heard and saw that understood the problem. <laughs> but the guy saying it didn't didn't see nothing wrong with that. And and here we are, I believe, basically a lot of uh, do no harm folk. You know, I don't I don't feel particularly threatened in word by anybody on the internet. You know, it's just words on a screen. But the stuff that I look for that makes my, you know, uh, my dork button go on, I suppose, is the people that agree with my core, you know. And there's there's a few of them. There's variety in that. Hmm. I use anti as an example. He does radio, okay. Now, the funny thing about doing radio on the Internet is there's not a competitive, oh, man, this guy's going to get more people than I am thing. It's more, hey, Anti is doing weird radio, weirder than I do. you got to check this shit out. It's bizarre. And I don't mean that in a negative. I mean it in, if you're interested in weird music, which some people are, my wife loves the shit out of it. Me, I don't. I don't know if it's a mood or... I have to be available. And I was available, turned on his link. For the first 15 minutes, that whale music had me completely baffled until I heard you speak. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. It was just weird. But it wasn't weird in the sense of, shut this off, my brain is melting. It was more... Whoa, I wonder what the hell this is all about. And it, it got my curiosity. So there you go. And as an artistic minded character, I'm just given uh, anti a little, you know, hand, I don't know, uh, praise for being creative enough to produce something and then put it out there for us to see it if we wanted to. And that's not as easy to do as, as I try and make it sound. It took me a while to get to where I'm at in comfort. Hold on one second. To be comfortable to do this. And now I've been doing it so long. It's like riding a bike. You ride a bike for a couple years. And then you never really forget. You just either need to or not. Or don't need to. So you know like they go. The the proof is in the pudding. No. that, That Uncle Seymour's ball here is in the pudding. That's not proof (laughs) but it's the proof that uncle seymour made the pudding (laughs) so you know one more time how you see things it's all a matter of uh, how you see them got nothing to do with anybody else and we all seem to think that our input could be uh, interrupted or 
uh, infiltrated by outside verbal sources. You know, I'm not so sure. I think people have to be willing participants in their own destruction. I don't see it as the kind of forced destruction like a bombing or a murder or no this mind stuff plays on you for years years plays on shit you don't know they're playing on that's why they apologize for experimenting on us mm -hmm. now some of us come out i would suppose depending on who you are what your indoctrination your upbringing i could sound like a complete and total madman to a certain type of person. And I understand that. And looking on that person that thinks that of me, see, there's the mirror effect that I've brought up many, many times. If you want to know the truth about any fucking thing in the world, just go stand in front of a mirror. But don't just do it for like 10 seconds. Go stand there for a while. Look at yourself. <laughs> The faster you get bored or scared of that fucker, the less you got for the rest of us, I think. You know, because we're all taught to that your self-image is ego and all this other crap that it's really not. You can't, I can't take care of Cirque if I'm in a physical or a mental condition to not do it. So the ego thing is to keep you in condition to take care of whoever you're responsible for. And yeah, that's it too. We take the responsibility on. Now whether we're good at it or not, we try. And we promise our partner, well, I'll do this and I'll do that and I'll blah, blah, blah. And some people, they fall back on their word or they can't live up to their promise or their expectations of the promise are too high. And people get out of balance and things go wrong. And what I've learned over the 59 is try to sit down and talk to them before you make uh, a decision that you'll never want to return from. Because that's the way I do it. I go, man, I'm finished. And I've always been able to keep that. Nope, I'm not going to do it. And Vinny got to me on the electronic world in a way that was kind of new. And I went, wow, so this is compromising, huh? This is what, uh, this is all anybody ever wanted? Hmm. But on the electronic world, there's no physical encounter, so things are a little bit different than in physical life. But the results look similar, I would say. So I, uh, I think the lesson I learned from Vinny is uh, nothing is etched in concrete in my life nothing at all and the minute I make it that way that's my choice so I gotta pick the things I want to be permanent <laughs> and those things to other people sound insane but my living proves that it's true so hmm. and then I get on the radio and uh, discuss life from a perspective that's not very popular not run-of-the-mill and not very well explained, I would assume, because it's not been a topic of a discussion for me till the radio. And then I went, hey, I can tell people how this crap looks, you know, from my perspective. And then they can tell me how I'm wrong. Now, the farthest I've gotten the opposition to go is to call me a liar. But not yet one time will they write down... The exact lie I told, so I could correct it. <laughs> Just the, you know, that five, six-year-old cookie in the hand thing. I ain't taking my cookie. And they crush it because they're holding it. And then they're little kids, and little kids are just disgusting. And then after they crush it, then they just shove it in their face and eat it. Because who else would want it? And you ever have a cousin or a friend or somebody that would do disgusting things to your food so they could take it from you? <laughs> Poor people in America were creative at school. Yeah, I saw a kid pretend to sneeze on the other kid's food to take his food from him because he sneezed on it. 
because he didn't have money to buy his own freaking food. So when I look back on, you know, the 70s were both good and bad, but seeing things like that in school kind of drove me out of school. And I I think it was the a combination of the behavior of the kids, my peers, who I thought were just a bunch of morons, and uh, the adults that were hurting us like, you know, little, like dogs and cats. It was just terrible. I, I don't remember enjoying much of it. Uh, and then when I was old enough to decide for myself what to do about it, my decisions were... Uh, of somebody of a much older age than a 12 year old and the shit that I pulled off was legend you know crying out loud I hitchhiked from LA to Bellingham Washington and and halfway back to LA before I got arrested for you know being a runaway and that's the crime that they arrested me for being a juvenile without an adult supervising and I didn't think nothing of it (laughs) just kept for about a year I was just a horrible kid and they kept trying to repair me and fix me and I think that year was the year that pushed me my life into this uh, think for yourself and stay away from the game kind of guy the game is dangerous if you're going to play that game some of these people are playing for uh, they're playing for your life they want to make you work in a place for 30 years so that you can buy a house. And I thought, wow, I don't want to live anywhere right now in this point of my life for 30 fucking anything. 30 days. <laughs> so, what was it about? I don't know. I was a teenager. And, uh, and now all the grown-up time has come and I'm an adult to a point and now I'm satisfied being in one spot but I've got the fortunate past of taking advantage of all the opportunities to travel that came my way I took them all and I never said no to a trip and if people wanted to go somewhere I would and I was invited I was gone didn't matter where it was and now complete opposite <laughs> I don't know what to make of it anymore so how's the RLM chat doing? Ah, I was just bullshitting and reminiscing today on the dork table about eh, the way I see life. You know, um, not a lot of people do. They, how could they? I could no more understand life the way you explain it than you could understand it the way I explain it. But I think what comes of all this is. Occasionally, somebody else will tell me, like Miss Mary. I'll use Mary for a great example. Uh, She is big in oils and remedy, and she knows the law, and she knows what the words mean, and she's intelligent, and she's honest. So if Mary tells you something, me, I know I can believe her. I don't ever have to doubt a word that woman says. And not only did I know it, and believe it but whatever I did for myself as her suggestion because it wasn't advice I asked her what would I do about this if I was you kind of thing and she would respond I would use this and that and you mix this and that and you get this result and at the time it was to help my little brother and I didn't have the problem but he did and I was on you know baby brother watch daily to see him get through this crap and it worked everything that um, was expected from the mixture of these components and then applied properly then the result would be exactly what was expected of the combination now I come from a long long life of being disappointed about the truth about what the thing did except for cannabis and uh, what else oh baking soda rosehip 
turmeric. There's just a handful of things that I'm familiar with at this point. Ginger, uh, what else? Things that I, I really have found a benefit from them. You know, add them to my, uh, my diet, which isn't very good. I'm not a big eater. But because of that, uh, added, the additive stuff, I feel a world better. And if this is a placebo effect, does it matter? <laughs> no, of course not. What matters is your, how you, your mind, my mind, of course, accepts the new input. Because my body's doing all this incredible shit. You know, all I got to do is just eat it. And the body goes, hey, bring that stuff down here. And it's going, hey, send that stuff over there. But we're not taught specifically when we're young Hey, when you get old, your body's going to require this and require that. And if you eat a vegetable a certain way, it produces this effect, and you'll get that much pro, uh, production from it in this area of life. Well, there's a lot of people my age and a few years older on hanging around in the Real Liberty media. A couple of them have a, like, like Java, have a, an existing situation that you know, hey, this comes a time where people need to know that your mind is so freaking powerful that if you approach a problem such as healing with a new idea, it doesn't hurt anything. It might sound wackadoodle. You know, you might be laughing your butt off if you're hearing this and thinking, but I'm a true believer. What you eat and what you believe are the two cornerstones to success. If you believe you're going to be something, you're going to be it. But it must be fueled as properly as you can, or you're going to get a, a half-assed result, like if, with the electricity we get. If we've got pure electricity on a, a, a vibration that was physically adaptable to or the way we live, we would have a lot of less aggravation <laughs> amongst the people. You know, that are fighting and the ones that get conned into doing all this crap for these corporations to make money to succeed, to buy a house, to blah, 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 blah. And they go, well, no, oh, you're a communist. No, I'm I'm just not convinced that the world's $21 trillion in debt to anybody. Any world, any country, any state, it's all, this is the best way to explain it's all a fiction if if you're living in debt what you, what are we living in well this is the product of <laughs> fueling us in the most profitable way which is we get cheap shit but we don't know that and the people that do know it the people that don't know it don't care and the people that do know it can't get together in a big enough group to stop what is going on and set it right. Plus, they got the public, you know, the John Average that doesn't have an education because he went to public school where they don't offer education. They just teach you a bunch of shit that's not true. <laughs> so fucked up. Gun laws. Their concerns aren't about teaching a child how to behave as an adult and how to work. They're trying to teach them how to hate guns and trust this politician and these laws. These are little kids. You want to grow up and be a homosexual so that you can get along with everybody. Whatever weirdness that is weird will be made common. <laughs> <laughs> just split up the herd in smaller and smaller groups. So there's like a thousand groups, but no unity. And if you can't look at it and see that and see it has worked, then what you're doing is you're probably picking a side and blaming the blue team for being a bunch of fuck-ups. And if you're on the blue team, then you're doing the opposite. Ah, the red team's a bunch of fuck-ups. Okay, this is how I see it. The game was perverted through a bunch of bullshit over a long period of time. Or, this was a long-range plan and the results will never be what the promises were. Now, knowing that, 
if you understand and agree with what I just said, how could you possibly participate in something that is so self-destructive? And it's going to take many years for the thing to find. Look at what Rome went, went through if you read the history books. For the same fucking reasons, nothing changed. They just got more of us to um, herd and tax and breed and whatever they do, experiment on us like we're a bunch of lab rats. And the ones that know it, to the ones that don't know it, sound crazy. And they tell us so. <laughs> they, they call us anarchist scum. <laughs> Can you imagine? I... Well, I guess it's only fair because we call them voter scum. You know, because without the support of the people, what would we have these problems that we have? Hmm. Let us ponder. <laughs> I, do, I don't even know how to explain that one. But it seems, you know, like reality dictates that people get together in large groups and uh, they meet and then they make decisions and these decisions are carried out by their underlings and blah, 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 blah. but when you look at the results years down the road there's usually a big pile of shit right in the middle of their big promise and when you get to the end of the promise you find you were so disappointed because your promise never came true now the beauty of the uh, communicating world is how you can manipulate the information and then distribute it to your little group, whoever your little group is, in a certain way. So your little group reacts in a certain way and everybody gets what they want. What they don't understand is it's, it's only real in your mind. You don't use these things physically in life. <laughs> it's just not it's not sane if you are a political if you're out there doing your damn getting your donuts at freaking what are you getting them Krispy Kreme and you're lecturing the girl at Krispy Kreme about something and giving her a bunch of crap because she's gay or she's a liberal or whatever the fuck that all crap is why? why would you want to do something like that? Or why would you want to brag about being the kind of person that goes out in the public eye looking for problems with other people and making it uh, clear that the place they're going is designed to cater to the people you're calling opposition? It's, it doesn't make any sense to me. That would be like going into a bar of bikers and Yelling, hey, well, who's the faggot with the motorcycle out front? You're not going to be happy walking out there if you can walk out. But we have internet and we got people that claim to do things. They refuse to prove they do. And it really has me upset. Can you tell? Can you? Can you? Uh-oh. Shut the door. Turn on the AC. Crank up flash. No more Zoom Zoom. Well, thank you, Miss Kate. We got a few minutes left here on the dork table to entertain you with my insanical way that I look upon my fellows and fellowettes out there in the world. <laughs> it's not... It. I think it's so easy, it's just not believable is the problem. Because uh, I don't know how to interpret in another person's results. I can only read what they write, and then interpret their results with my ability. So if I don't share your point of view or your history or your lack of intelligence, I just assume we're going to be on at odds and never agree about nothing. But I only threw that intelligence line there because it's such a big deal to him. <laughs> He loves to brag. I'm so. I'm smart, Michael. I'm smart. Pop over, lick me for you. <laughs> Killed Fredo. <laughs> Who lost? You know, it wasn't the guy that did the shitty shit to kill his brother that 
that won. It was the guy that did the shitty shit that lost. Now, the lesson we learn in real life is the guy that brags about doing the shitty shit to get all the goodies. He's full of shit. <laughs> if you're a lying piece of shit out in the real world and you make your money off of suffering and misery, you're not in the Harlem. No, that's, that's your fantasy life out there. And all I'm asking you for to get me off this kick is show me a link. And I'll even apologize. I just want to link a Hansel going to Starbucks and whipping those liberals into shape and giving them shit. Because I don't think you can do that in America. I think you could do it in Denmark. You probably get into a fight in the parking lot. But nobody's going to call the police here. Well, we don't have a Starbucks in Freddie Town. We got one in the airport in Copenhagen. But I would, nah, I don't, unless I'm flying, I ain't going, and I ain't going to Copenhagen for no Starbucks. And when I was there, I didn't buy anything from Starbucks. Fuck that. Anyway, that is me. I'm a coffee, what do you call it? Prude. God, if it's popular, it usually tastes god-awful, and it's expensive, so some billionaire can get his nuts washed every fucking 40 minutes, and I'm not into supporting idiots like that. I, in fact, I'm, I'm the guy that thinks the idiot that willingly and openly supports that should just stop doing it. <laughs> you're, you're not showing off, pal. <laughs> you're showing people, wow, a, a side of life that they perhaps would rather you did than they did their self because I'm one of those, I don't want to do that. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to make anyone suffer. But I want to hold people accountable for what they tell you. Now, some people, I don't give two shits about what they say, period. Don't interest me. This other guy, me and him have been at this for years. And I'm curious. Now my curiosity bone's going, well, where's the proof? I've been reading all this stuff for a long time. I have not yet once seen any proof. So I'm sad. <laughs> and I'm on the dork table. So, And it's my show so I can talk about any damn thing I want to. <laughs> Don't have any here to save no one. And my pal Vinny too. I, I really get a kick out of Vinny doing radio with me, by the way. In case you guys didn't notice. Um. Uh, me and Vinny are day and night in some ways, and the exact same in others, and they clash at the weirdest times. <laughs> but, hold on one second. But, you know, you take the good with the bad in life, I suppose. Well, some people don't. Some people claim they kick the shit out of bad every day. Every day they're out there fighting evil, stomping the shit out of bad. Well, I don't think so. I think people are telling stories. I don't think people uh, fight anything <laughs> except their self. <laughs> I mean, unless you put hands on somebody else or draw blood or whatever the fucking case is, some kind of weapon, Where where's the fight? Words? Are, are you kidding me? What, are you married? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Do, do my words bother you? Let me ask you a question. Come here. Lean into the radio. Let me whisper this real quietly so my wife doesn't hear it. <laughs> do my words really bother you? Or could it be that the words that bother you are true? <laughs> Jeez. That would drive me to uh, probably be angry. Like if I had this, uh, what do you call it, uh, obsession with Pelosi, and I was pro Pelosi, and all I could think about is someday that woman could be the leader of the free world, sit in the White House, rule us with an iron clit. But I'm not. Uh, but I could be. I could say any. Any crazy, wacky idea that comes to mind in the chat room when I'm typing, I can type anything I please. Don't have to prove it, but if you type it, there it is, right there for you all to see. It's true. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> wow. 
What a world we're in, people. <clears throat> anyway, we're coming up to the end here of the Dork Table Podcast solo. Because Vinny didn't show. Mary didn't show. Moose didn't show. Grim didn't show. But I, I did manage to pull off a show. <laughs> I have no idea. I think it was just reminiscing and uh, putting my uh, my opinions on how I see things. What I think worked for me. Not do this and do that. Uh, I don't know. I just know what I did. And what I did goes against everybody's uh, logic, reasoning, education. Oh, probably the way they feel about it. Uh, then you got the people that I'm physically involved with and they're with me. So mm. let us weigh this out. The physical world that I physically see and judge and whatnot versus a bunch of script on a screen <laughs> get it get it everybody get it because <laughs> some of the stuff that you read here is very helpful depends on the person putting out what they're putting out and some of it's just a load of shit that you're way better off not looking at and you know subjective everybody's entitled to an opinion so the beauty of this transaction is that the opposition is there to put the opinion up that nobody wants to see to reinforce, oh, I don't want to know that shit. This is a bunch of crap. And there you go. And that's how I see that. Now, other people might see that differently. I would assume other people do. I don't think I'm in a group of... Uh, we all think the same exact thing about every goddamn topic. And if you don't, you're not my friend. <laughs> I don't see that. Because, uh, good Lord, just right off the top here, we got N. Well Then, Miss Kate, J. Dredd. Uh, who else? No, nope, that trust number one. Now, that's five completely different personalities right there. And what what's the common link between them? They're on R-L-M. Now, Vinny wants to take the name to the level of, uh, I came here because of the name. And I didn't. I came here because I think Mary came here. And I wanted to see what she was doing over here because I trust Mary's judgment in, in uh, electronic sites. <laughs> anyway, but uh, what was I getting at at that in, in the long run? Well, it wasn't because of the name Real Liberty Media. I came over because I was invited by a friend. Let's go check this out. And Vinny takes it to the level of that the name is so important to the world and they need to recognize it for what it says and live up to it. and uh, Expectations and rules and regulations and all the, the very fucking thing he seems to be against except here <laughs> in this one area this is where Vinny goes full tilt and I'm, I I don't have uh, Vinny's experience to see it the way he sees it I'm just verbally you know uh, regurgitating how I see what he sees and it makes good radio because me and him, wow, sometimes I have to tell him, hey, you're not listening. <laughs> but, see, that's doing radio. It's real hard to plan what crazy and good, wonderful shit you're going to tell the other guy while he's talking to you. Because then you'd have to listen to him. <laughs> and, and when it's your turn to yak, you just say what comes out. But we're really not like that. It's... Me and Mary tried it for what, two and a half years, and it was always a riot on the show, because I was pontificating, and she was reading about you know um, Lily Bell's haircut, or you know world world famine, or the debt clock, or some other link or interest, and she's reading this while I'm chatting, so she doesn't have any idea what I'm talking about, and that was the part about working with her on radio I really liked, but I don't like doing it like that with Vinny as much. Uh, but I get the same result. Vinny, Vinny's way ahead of me and thinking, thinking, thinking. And I'm just a simple, easy guy making 
really bad jokes slowly. <laughs> Let me take a guzzle. Well, so, hold on. Oh, great. All right, now I got it right. I hope you enjoyed the Dork Table podcast on this ninth day of March 2019. And uh, now we'll take you to the lineup. I think that does the show. It's close enough. Nothing special beyond my opinions about shit and stuff. And uh, if it strikes something and you, you know... It makes you think of your own answer as more what I'm going for than for you to repeat me. Because everything don't work the same for everybody. Most everybody. And then there's some times where what really works good for everybody doesn't work for me. So I've been on the, that weird end of that stick. And try not to depend too much on uh, everybody agreeing and being on my side and all that horse shit. That's all flattering and all that crap. But at the end of the game, if if you don't know the money's not real and we're being experimented on like lab rats, well, then you're probably not interested in listening to this crazy show. <laughs> so thanks a lot to the RLM chat and people out there at BitChute and Spreaker and Wow, Grim put us all over the place, so I, I don't even know if I have an audience beside bit shoots about as far as I look. Um, but I know there are, so it's real fun to do this, knowing that people get a giggle out of it, or learn something, or have an opinion that they share or don't share, and yell at the screen and call me names. You know, it's all good. Anyway, thank you very much, and what do we got coming up? This is Saturday night in... Denmark, so that means in the morning we have Grimner Opes opening up. I don't do the time slots right. I always fuck them up because I'm in Denmark, so I'm not going to do the time slots. You, you guys figure it out. There's a schedule on a Real Liberty Media. Open it and look. But I'm going to tell you the shows. We got Grimner with the Blues in the morning. My morning. Wait a minute. Is it his morning? <laughs> Here we go. And then that's followed up by a game of trivia. We play online trivia. Been doing it for a while. Some of these brainiacs got like thousands of answers. and Some of us little people got like a hundred, a hundred and a quarter, something like that. But when you're dealing with four people that can type faster, it's, it's hard to win. So this is not for the weak-minded. If you can't take an ass whipping, don't come here. We're the... RLM chat telling you we should make a team and go against other rooms in a competition on Sunday for the Dork World Cup of Trivia. <laughs> I don't, I'm just bullshitting around. Anyway, and then after that leads into Hal Anthony does Behind the Woodshed and he takes out a can of whoop ass and does what he does and Hal's good at it. Then uh, Monday night, Got Grimner comes on with Grim Leftovers, which means the links he didn't get to with Moose on the Freakers Ball on Friday night. Then he tries to pick up a few of them on his new podcast. And it's entertaining. He does some good links and throws in his little, you know, opinion and what he thinks of such and whatnot. And I find it pretty cool. Check him out Monday night. Then Tuesday night, I don't know what to say about Vinny. I might be solo on the radio for a while. He might really be seriously blacking us out. <laughs> so I don't know. I've got Tuesday night with In a Perfect World with myself, and maybe I'll get a hostage. I don't know. Can't promise. Then Wednesday night, we got Miss Mary comes on with the Rocket Share podcast, and Thursday night, I got a late night thing I do called 20% off. Then Friday night, you got Miss Mary comes back again doing the Rocket Chair podcast. And then after that, I did the time wrong. I believe it was 11 o'clock you start on the Freaker's Ball, but I thought it was 10. 
And then they do all these time changes, and then you're moving an hour ahead a week before we do. It's really a mess for like a week, two weeks out of the year when they move the time forward and move it back. But they don't have the decency to do it all at the same fucking time. They do it in, like, sections. Hold on. Well, and that will lead us back to the Dork Table podcast on Saturdays at 12 noon on the East Coast. If you're in the United States of America, that's what time it will be. And with that, I will say to you all, <laughs> good night.